Welcome back to the Magic Healthy Show. Welcome to 2024. I know it's been a hot minute again and gosh, it's there's so much I have to update you on, I guess. I'm excited about that and very happy that my energy for the podcast is back. And I've really missed you. But I also want to say that, you know, there's there's just so much about we or us moving out of this cross of planning into really being in tune with what is required energetically and where our energy is needed. And I'm really following that being the projector that I am, even though the human in me just has so much resistance sometimes, you know, and the Capricorn moon that I am is just like, well, but I got to do work and I got to do this and I got to do this. And I just am really in tune with where my energy is needed most and I'm trying my best to have to focus on there. And so it felt like this pause between December and now was necessary for you all also to tune into what's happening and what's shifting. But then at the same time, something in me really felt like I need to come back. I need to update you. I also need to share what's going on. And that's what this episode will be all about. And in addition to that, I really want to say, I think I also didn't have the energy to record and share what's going on with all of you because there was just not a lot of feedback. and. I guess being the projector that I am, I didn't feel as invited, you know. And so I really want to say moving forward, and it's not just in relationship to, you know, me and the creative work that I do, but this universe will is working more and more. It becomes more obvious. It's always been like that, but it will become more and more obvious that what you give out, you will get back. And so if you're constantly absorbing and consuming and taking in from people but you're never really giving anything in exchange energetically then at some point you won't get anything anymore you know because it's like you are becoming this energetic vampire and I feel that very strongly with even Pluto in Aquarius now which in this episode I want to talk all about Pluto in Aquarius and what's been shifting and what has shifted last weekend basically two days ago and also talking about the full moon in leo that is this week because obviously i'm a leo and i'm coming back with the full moon in leo right which is literally happening on my mercury so i mean I'm, i'm i'm saying this all the time but i'm also not immune to the energies it's not that i've been planning that but it's just you know i'm just flowing with what what's happening and if the full moon in leo is literally on my Mercury, I guess the universe is like, well, you got to release full moon, a fucking podcast because your voice is also needed. And actually people have been commenting on my voice on my Instagram. That's what gets me back, you know, what, what got me here or what made me record an episode was someone reaching out and was like, I miss your voice. And then I put a poll on Instagram or like a question box and someone was that was the one comment that made me like, fuck, I'm, I have to, you know, I have really have to, like, it really sparked something in me. And this comment, um, and if you're listening, I, I pray this episode will do the, the same for you. She basically said, you know, I, I really miss going on a walk with you because it always brought me so much peace. And I'm like, gosh, that's what we need right now. And if I can only cultivate peace in one person by recording this one episode then my job is done because i cultivated at least one more piece of peace on this earth right and so that's what i'm here for you know making you feel safe in this crazy fucking cuckoo world unpredictable ever changing so much noise so much distraction so much going on it's probably the hardest thing ever to be at peace and see, you know, hope in everything. And still, there's a way to do that. You know, there's a way that we can always change our perception and choose the reality we want to experience by attuning our frequency to that. 
But going back to Pluto moving into Aquarius and what I'm saying, where we all have to have this check-in, where it's all fun and games to be inspired, it's all fun and games to use social media, to do all of that. I've reduced my consumption to like such a minimum level. Like literally, I, I posted, <laughs> posted on Instagram yesterday, my screen time has been down almost 80%, like almost like just an hour. Um, and obviously, I'm also doing like my own Instagram work and everything. So you can imagine, I'm really not, con I, I don't have the energy con to consume. That's the interesting thing. I, I used to be a person that is like constantly like, you know, getting inspired and fueled by what other people are sharing. But I'm so in tune with my own connection now that I don't even want to see what other people are perceiving because I'm perceiving things and I'm downloading things. And I feel like that's the piece that I need to bring down to earth. I don't want to be distracted by other people's things that they are birthing into the earth so much, if that makes sense. And if you are someone who constantly consumes, 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 but you never give anything back to the universe, so to speak, right? Which is also, you know, it's not about you only being creative, woman and Leo, but it's also about showing appreciation, love, booking a session, whatever energy you can give back to someone. You know, donation is a thing too, where you just show appreciation, right? Because that person, that creator has created a piece that elevated your frequency, literally. That person helped you elevate your frequency. So you got some energetic upgrade from that. And if you are not appreciating that, or if you are not giving that back to them, at some point, either you don't get energy back anymore from that person because they just escape off the earth plane. Because what really happens, I mean, it even happened to me, where it had to be really concerning. Obviously, they get burned out, but energetically, it's like you are feeding off of their energy, right? You're feeding off of their energy and they don't get anything back. And again, it's not just in speaking about me. It's about every creator. We have to be really careful. Not careful is the wrong word, but aware of that, right? You can't just take, take, take from people and then expect that person to stay healthy or that person to be continuing to be enjoying the work that they do. There has to be this balance. And I just wanted to say that because Sometimes even just this one comment or someone reaching out is fueling up my cup again, right? But if there's no fuel back or, you know, seeing a review on iTunes or you sharing the podcast, um, not just even on social media, but with someone else, because then there's someone else listening and, you know, that ripple that it creates, that also helps. Obviously, there's also this energy of when your frequency changes, it's all also doing something to me, but we are so much more energetically entangled that we are aware of. So it's not just you in your own little microcosm, me in my own little microcosm, and you're like, oh, it doesn't make a difference if I'm listening to this. Well, it does, right? It does because you're energetically attuning to me, right? You're energetically attuning to the podcast, and obviously you are changing your vibration with everything that you consume. So it's just, that's all Pluto and Aquarius you're speaking because it's all about frequency now really and the nervous system right and how we are connected to so many things through our nervous system through our dna this quantum entanglement i mean i can't even tell you how many insights downloads and things i receive about the nervous system about the dna and about this the web that we are in that's why i love to work with the gene keys and human design and obviously also astrology so I'm really grateful that I've been able to have the space also to deepen that practice and that work because every single day I'm really like attuning to this, okay, this is how we can rewire ourselves and this is how we can train our system and download new operating systems and download new codes and all of the things and to be really aware of that and using that for my own recovery as well which I've been really focusing on. And it's fascinating how much, basic, I mean, at, honestly, like at this point, I'm just like, we are just a walking nervous system, really. And 
because the nervous system works on electricity and we're walking electricity at the end of the day we are walking frequency and so you have to become your own tuning fork and really pluto and aquarius here you have to be your own tuning fork and really protect your nervous system to the highest degree really like Everything has an effect on your nervous system. We are sentient, sensitive beings, and we have to be really discerning of that. And every frequency that you let in, and I'm speaking also about social media, about you know all the the, the frequencies, like that, just even light, obviously, but then also being outside in the sun or not having sun or being on a device that is constantly emitting a frequency. It, it's just all making it more difficult for your nervous system to function in its natural state because there's constant interference, right? Not saying that we have to be afraid of any of that because you have the power at the end of the day. But if you don't train your cells and yourself to be very focused on, okay, this is my frequency, and this is how I can hold the frequency, right? No matter what's happening outside and what's coming in, then it gets difficult. And obviously there's a lot of things that can influence and impact that. And I think the biggest influence really has this, I mean, the best way to sort of sort of weaken the nervous system is by a lack of sleep and by, yeah, putting us in a state of survival and unpredictability, right? Which is basically the world right now so it's very important to take care of your nervous system and to have space and time in your day to know where you know you can come to that peaceful restful state not just in sleep but in meditation or in going out for a walk or again knowing okay if i listen to this then it soothes soothes, soothes me my fucking god it soothes me. Like I've been listening to a lot of mantras or calming music and things like that. Like constantly, like really bringing yourself back to peace, right? That vibration of peace and everything is well. Everything is well. The outside world might look completely different, but you have to cultivate that state. Everything is well and taken care of because it is, right? It really is. The mind might want to tell you that it's not can't be like that but everything is taken care of everything always works exactly the way it needs to there are no mistakes in creation which is very hard for us as humans to see and to believe right because we live in this duality thing and we think everything is only perfect if everything is quote unquote good or you know bliss but no, everything is always taken care of means everything plays out exactly how it needs to for growth and evolution, right? And if we look into the world right now, everything works out perfectly right now for growth and evolution of our species. And we gotta trust that. We have to trust that. Because we can. Because ultimately, nothing is in our creation and control anyways. It's never been, I keep coming back to that analogy because it's the best way to prove it, you know. Your mom was not in control of conceiving you, even of making you grow. Like she didn't actually grow you in the womb. It was source that brought you here right? And every single day, your breathing, your digestion, your heartbeat, you don't actively do anything in, in that. And in the very same way, you don't actively create your life. You don't. You can choose, right? Things that you prefer or really attune to things that you that excite you right and like tune into that source that makes you breathe and you know digest and all of the things but at the end of the day we have to be really honest like everything is beyond our control 
You can't control what's happening in the world. You really can't. You just have to see, choose how you see it, right? How you perceive it. And the more you cultivate that peace inside of you, you will realize that it impacts you less. Because in your energetic orbit, it can't reach you. It's happening somewhere. And it's not about bypassing, right? But it's, it's happening somewhere. But energetically, you're not a vibrational match to these happenings. So you won't be physically impacted. Because your physicality, your aura, your orbit is not a vibrational match to that. That's why you don't find yourself in the war, right? You don't find yourself in the hospital being sick, even though there are people that are sick on the planet. Yes, there are people, you know, that are starving. There are people that lose their job. There are people, all of that is happening. But as long as you are not a vibrational match to that frequency, it won't happen to you. You won't find yourself in that state because you're not a vibrational match to that. Does that make sense? So that's why it's so important to, first of all, the full moon and Leo, make sure that the number one thing for you to create and to cultivate and to protect is your frequency. Because it's literally your saver. It, it's, it's like your safeguard. Your frequency determines where you land. And I've been saying that since 2018 because it, I got this very clear vision back then. I was like, this is so wild. Um, oh, yeah, I think it was even 2017 where I just realized, oh my gosh, um, we die every day and every morning we wake up in a new reality and in a new body. And actually everything we wake up to, is, is, it, it looks the same as yesterday, but it's, it's different. That makes sense. So the way you digest the day and what happens during sleep and all of that, which has a lot to do also with restoring your nervous system and all of the things, right? Integrating the upgrades and you literally wake up in, in a new reality every morning, which is amazing because it gives you this opportunity to start from scratch every day, like you're born, right? And it also tells you why it's so important to then feel into your energy, like who am I today? You know, what's happening now? Okay, what, what am I a vibrational match to today? To not always approach every day as you've always done that because then nothing will really change. To really see yourself new every day and like explore who you are, where your vibration is at, what you are, you know, excitement is leading you towards, obviously human design, working with your strategy and authority and to really give yourself that space to not be so predictable, literally. Like that's what I'm saying. I've been really tuning into that and be like, where, who am I today? Am I this astrologer? Am I this human design pe person? Am I talking about the gene keys? Am I a family person? Am I just, you know, decluttering things? Am I just in the woods? Am I just minding my own business? Like, what, what's on the agenda today, energetically speaking? And that's where we go. You know, that's where we go. That's our main job. And some days that looks like me meditating for three hours and then, you know, taking care of my business, like body and, you know, self-care. Next thing I know, it's the evening. I'm like, I've, like, what have I even done today? But the day was so full with, like, important things, just, like, really tuning into energy and, like, going places, being pulled somewhere, whatever. It's, it's like, and I trust that I will be supported by life, by source, by navigating the world like that, because that's also how the new humans that are coming, you know, obviously we, we all already are near the bridge generation, I keep saying that, but the new babies that are being born and also people that right now fall maybe under this spectrum of autism, ADHD and things like that, it's, it's all just because we are already wired in a different way where we understand that life is inherent, more instinctual. 
less predictable, not planable. And we can't really say what we feel drawn to the next moment, right? That's why, I mean, someone asked that question also for a podcast, what they would like to hear about. If this new age is all about planning only for six months, and I'm like, really? Instead of 12. I'm like, what? Uh, six months is, seems like very far to me too. Like, I can't plan like that. You know, I mean, I'm freaking out about planning even, you know, for the next month or whatever. Like, it, we move out of the cross of planning. What can I say? Like, planning altogether is not a thing anymore. Like, no. It's, it's, everything is shifting and moving so quickly. It's, it's, it's difficult to plan like that. And it's really more about being instinctual and in the flow and tuning into what is needed energetically, which is also, Pluto and Aquarius, very much beyond our own personal agenda all the time, right? To step over that and be like, okay, it's not just about me in this cosmos, it's also about the collective and I've been created because I make an impact in the universe at large with my frequency. So where's my frequency needed, right? And what is needed from my vibrational aura, vessel, all of that, right? That responsibility that I really much feel about. You're designed and created and hear and exist and vibrate in this body for a reason, right? And it's not about finding your purpose or doing so much. It's about who are you being? Like, what are you radiating? Are you attuned to your natural vibration? You know, like, again, I'm coming back to you are walking electricity, but are you firing in the way that you were designed to fire in order for the cosmos at large to function, right? And if not, then, well, there's probably something off in the frequency of the cosmos because your frequency is off. And you feel that because you get the feedback loop of, I feel fucking off, what's happening, right? And it's normal that we sometimes feel off so we can learn how to attune ourselves back to our original home frequency, right? And every single time that happens, we learn and learn and learn more about that. Because that's what we come here to explore. Like, oh, I'm a frequency, you know, I'm, I'm like a tuning fork at, at the end of the day. And an energy alchemist, I, I mean, I say that about the work that I do anyways. I'm like an energy alchemist because someone comes to me and I'm tuning them back to their original, peaceful, restful, natural frequency. And of course, I use the tools like astrology, human design, and gene keys to really go deep into, okay, what is their natural frequency? Where is it off, right? What is singing the wrong tone right here in the system? Where is the circuit not firing, right? Right? Where is there no electricity maybe flowing, right? Where is there a shortcut or whatever? And then we tune you back in, you know? That, that's, that's what it is. It sounds like surgery, but that's really the visual even that I get sometimes. I'm like, okay. And you can feel that because your energy shifts and changes. With every session, you know, every interaction, every podcast, or if you, you know, you, you read the forecasts on Instagram. Um, yeah. And that's all I want you to plug back into your original home frequency. Because if you vibrate on the home frequency that you are born with, then there's at least a little bit more order in the cosmos. Because there's a lot of, you know, unease and disorder, I want to say. So that's what I wanted to share and it, it will become more and more obvious now that Pluto is in Aquarius where it won't tolerate, you know, Pluto is, is the planet that connects us to our soul, right? And in Capricorn, it was very much about dismantling, bringing to the surface and literally burning down the structures around us in our life that inner and outer structures, by the way, right? And the laws and the restrictions and all of the boxes that we have that are not in alignment with our natural soul flow, that literally limit us, restrict us from living our soul purpose here, right? The expansion. And I mean, it's very obvious that this is still dismantling, still breaking down, the structures are crumbling, it's all happening, right? On all levels. 
medical system, governments, institutions, you name it, like financial system, everything, where we are just like in our face, see, okay, this is crumbling, this is burning down, this was a lie, this was an illusion, this was like an elephant in the room that no one addressed before, but now it's open, like out there, right? There's just no denying. Pluto is just like, no, it has all, like everything has to come out of the closet here. We have to see it. And then only if we see it, we can transform it, right? And at the end of the day, now in, in Aquarius, it will be all about us realizing where our frequency is out of alignment with our soul. Right? Where is our frequency out of alignment with our soul? Which has a lot to do with the conditioning that we have, but also the influences that we let in, right? And I always see this interplay of, I mean, all the outer planets kind of like dance together, bringing us to the soul. And then if you still have Uranus and Taurus and we still have Saturn and Pisces, it's very much also about understanding how health you know and and again influences like being exposed to nature nutrition and the resources and all of the things how that has an impact on our nervous system on our natural state on our vibration and that will come up to the surface more so there will obviously be a lot more talk about health issues and medical things because ultimately the, the state of our health is also reflected in the nervous system and yeah, and the water that we consume and the food that we eat, all of the those basic things, right? But that's the foundation, really. And there is so much uh, that we have power over here. You know, obviously we can choose we have a choice. In every single moment, that's what, what we have to really see. No matter what's going on in the world, your vibration, again, dictates what you attract, what you are a vibrational match to. And your vibration is also determined by the choices that you make, but also what you have access to. You know, when you talk about maybe there is a food shortage, but you're not a vibrational match to that because you live in the frequency of abundance. So around you, it's not happening, right? It's happening on other, like you, you won't find yourself in that environment. That's the best way I can explain it. It's like you, you can't even, you're not a vibrational match to that. You know, it's happening somewhere. And yes, someone can t- talk about it. And then you can say like, oh, oh, start to be worried that it's happening in your place. But then you are manifesting it in your environment. But if you stay in that frequency of, this is not happening in my reality because I'm not a vibrational match to that, then it's not happening. It sounds really wild to the mind, right? That this is possible, but that's how it works. It's this entire universe creation is all about frequency. That's all it is. It's all vibration. It's all vibrating. So what you vibrate is what you experience. So with this full moon and Leo too, I really want you to connect to that because it's coming with the square to Chiron and Mars. And so it's very important for us to understand our power here. We can be our own tuning fork and we can choice our, choose our vibration that's that's our free will gets we can get swept away and swindled and like what's happening and you know listen to all of the things and start letting the mind tell us that this is happening to us or we can stay focused on the vibration that we cultivate hopefully in the morning We're like this is my vibration this is my reality now and i'm only attracting this and this is something you do beyond the mind by the way it's a vibrational thing like literally you have to download it into every single cell in your body it's a very somatic process what which is why meditation is really important because you go beyond the mind it's not just affirmation oh no i'm not vibrational that's not i mean for me affirmations really never worked that well because i mean you can tell yourself something all day long but if it's not 
being downloaded in your literal cells, right, then your cells won't emit that frequency. It's just not happening because the mind is only a part of it, right? Which is also why the opposite can be true, where your mind tells you something, but you vibrate, like you, you vibrate something completely different, so you attract completely different. So even though it doesn't make sense to the mind, right? The mind is like, well, no, I'm not, like, that's not happening. That's not, you know, no, your thoughts, they only have so much power. Your entire energetic body has the power. Otherwise, as soon as you think a black elephant, right? Oh, a black elephant would be knocking on your door at home. Well, that's not happening. So something else must, you know, actually manifest here. I just wanted to say that because there's a lot about, yeah, your thoughts create your reality, but only those repetitive thoughts that then sink into your subconscious, right? And so, of course, at some point, if you constantly have these thoughts and accept these thoughts, then they will ripple into your subconscious. But if you just let them bypass, right, and be like, okay, that's a thought. My, my thoughts are like, no, that's not happening. No, that's not happening, right? Then, but if you say, it, it's like being a bodyguard, I always like to say to your mind, where you're like, yeah, you can just flow through me and like want to make my life miserable, but I'm not buying into you, you know? You're just disturbing my peace, so no. You're not part of my vibration. And at some point, you won't, you, literally also your mind won't be a vibrational match to these thoughts anymore and they, will, they won't come up. They literally won't come up. Which, that's actually been a really important and useful tool for my own recovery process. Some of you might know that, obviously. I've always had this on and off battle with restrictive eating and, you know, anorexia for years of my life which is all about being in control of something. And especially if the world's out of control, it, it, it got really worse last year and all during COVID. And I was wondering how I can, like, what can I do, right? Because I just don't want to have these thoughts coming up anymore. And like, it's just fucking living in a mental prison to overthink and to be so consumed by all of the shit, right? It's running my mind. I'm like, can I just have a break? And then it got really clear to me how I can attune my vibration to simply not be a vibrational match to even receiving these thoughts anymore, right? Because I was so used to always having them, always having them, always having them come up, always having anxiety coming up around food, always wanting to control through that. And it was just so habitual that I even never saw that there would be another universe where that wouldn't happen, right? And I'm like, no, actually, if I just use all of my knowledge and skills that I have and every single day in meditation, I'm attuning my system to being, I'm not a vibrational match to that anymore. It might come up, but I really have to laugh at it and be like, oh, well, really? Like, are we going there again? No. And you can maybe use that for yourself where, you know, an old thought comes up um, that used to really bother you or you used to be freaked out about being rejected in a relationship or fear of, you know, losing money or this like all like urge to be productive and busy and hustle. And you can just laugh at it and be like, really? Like that's so, I like to say that's so Pluto and Capricorn now that's like the old world like we're not like really it's almost like someone believing in covid still we're like really <laughs> you know like because humor really shifts you out of this seriousness of life and you take it sometimes too serious because it seems so real right but at the end of the day it's a huge play of energy it's a huge play of energy and it's all created by our vibration Yes, so that's my little update. It was a big weekend, obviously, with Pluto and the Sun moving into Aquarius. Right afterward, we had Venus over the galactic center, which might also be a reason why I record this episode, because I have my North Node at the galactic center and Venus was over there. So maybe. But yeah, it, it's my pleasure to be back. I love to be back. I, you know, I'd love to make your world a little more peaceful, maybe helped you connect to 
a higher understanding of what's playing out in this really real seeming 3D kind of experience and see it from a bird's eye view and trust that everything always works out exactly as it needs to for growth and evolution. Like keep that in mind. There is no good, there is no bad. We have to drop the judgment and we have to trust in what created us and everything really in this universe, which is always love. Everything. The good, the bad and the ugly. Because again, it's all for our growth and evolution. The good, the bad and the ugly and the amazing too. So ask yourself, what is the energy that you are putting out there? for growth and evolution, right? For your own experience. What vibration are you vibrating on? And that's your main job. You create your frequency every single second of the day. It's your main job, really. You ask me, like, what's, what's my job in the age of Aquarius? It's your energy, your vibration. Because it, it literally, it's, everything comes from that or after that. It determines what you attract that day and the next day and tomorrow and who's going to text you and like all of the things. It's, it's just what it is. It sounds wild, but it's all based on how you are vibrating, right? Because that determines your magnetism, your energy. That's what I, why I keep saying and I mean, why I love, I mean, why I even started human design, right? It's all about, okay. I follow my strategy, my authority. I understand which centers I'm defined in, what my energy is for, here for. And then I use maybe the gene keys to understand that there are layers to expressing that energy. I can move from the shadow to, through the gift into the city, into the highest state. And then basically only attract the things that feel amazing, right? That are in tune with the highest expression that I could be. And then my job is done. So if you're curious to learn more about that, you all also know that I'm here for it to be an energetic tuning fork for you. So reach out to me if you are interested in sessions. I'm doing them in, you know, capacity that is, I'm very selective now. Where I'm like, okay, do I feel like I want to activate that person? or? You know, am I better off minding my own business? It sounds really weird because I love the service that I do, but I also, again, know and feel into, is this a right match right now? Is this helping the greater whole, the collective, right? Which ultimately, anyone who invites me usually is an energetic match. So it's not like, oh my gosh, you have to, you know, apply. But yeah. I just need the invitation and I need you to reach out to me and to really show that you are serious in also transforming and getting that upgrade and being that frequency that you are born to be, you know, if you are ready. That's why I say, like, you have to be ready. And I can feel if you have that readiness. And the first step is always to reach out. You can do that on Instagram or shoot me an email. And yeah, I, I would love to tune you back into peace in your nature and remembrance really because it's, it's all i help you remember just as i help you remember with this podcast and if you want to help someone else to remember right then share it share it on social media tag me so i can repost as well let me know what your biggest takeaway was share it with a friend somewhere else you know sharing is caring and remember you know what you put out you get back so also sharing you you make someone else's day better someone else might make your day better you know so it works it's it's all energy at the end of the day so i'm back with more energy soon but in the meantime find me on instagram at magic kathy official or reach out to me via dm or however you want to you know how you find me at this point i mean literally so and all the links are also down below in the show notes i'm sending you so much love a big hug and remember your frequency is the key so step in your magic. 